Toronto pre-construction buyers are forced to offload units for $150,000 than less than what they paid. Yeah, that just sounds like people who bought pre-constructions are underwater and are selling at a pretty big six-figure loss. I'm gonna be breaking all of this down for you on this week's reaction video, and I'm gonna give you my take on what's happening in the assignment market right now. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, we're kind of like one or two weeks into the official spring market, and if you're kind of wondering what's going on and whether you should be buying or selling based on like what your personal criteria is, yes, activity is still happening, but it's not happening as quick as some people would like to see, right? That's kind of my initial take on it. So if you wanna book a call with me to chat about your personal situation and how it applies to the current market and whether it makes sense for you to make a move, you can book a call with me using the link that's right here, it's on the screen. It's www.chatwithzen.com. Simply click on the date and a time that works best for you. And then when you see the prop, fill in your name, email, mobile phone number, and the question you have for me, and then we'll chat then. Good day, Toronto. Welcome to another episode of Prime Properties TV. My name is Zen, and if you're enjoying the content I'm putting out there, do me a solid and like and subscribe. So the article we'll be reviewing today is pre-construction condo bars forced to offload units as much as $150,000 less than what they paid. Holy smokes, that's quite some money, right? So we'll be breaking this down, and I'll give you my take and kind of my perspective on this, right, obviously. So the first thing we're gonna say here is, a growing number of pre-construction condo buyers in the GTA are struggling to close deals as the appraisals fall short, leading to a sell-off that's seeing units price up to 150,000 lower than the original purchase price. Look, I went, read through this entire article, obviously, and there's no definitive fact, but very easily you can just go online to see how many people are in distress selling and who are selling for a discount. I'll upload a whole bunch of those them over here and to go through. But like the worst one I saw was like, I think $250,000 off a pre-construction house. So it was like, I think 2.5 million and they're trying to sell it at 2.3. And eventually I think they sold for 2.25, right? So it was a $250,000 loss or 10% loss. Some of these cases up here, like it just really depends on how motivated the uh, sellers to get out of the contract. And the biggest uh, crux in all of this is how quickly do they have to close on the property? So the sooner they have to get occupancy, the sooner they have to close at the current rates in this environment, the more likely they're motivated to sell. And then the thing on top of that is what they bought it for. Because if they bought it in 2017, 2018, there's still a little bit of profit. But if you bought it during the pandemic, then you're kind of screwed. Or if you bought some remaining inventory at an elevated price, then yeah, you're kind of screwed, right? That's kind of where these bigger losses eventually come from. Now they're saying industry insiders say that the sell-off could put the entire building, so this is a pre-construction condo, at risk of seeing unit valuations drop, which could lead to a loss in equity for everyone who bought in the project, and it could eventually cause a delay of new units to come to market. So let me break this down for you, okay? So the unit valuation coming down for the entire building, I think that's a little bit blown out of proportion because most assignments are actually off market. They're not on MLS, meaning there's no record of it. So let's say one buyer um, just sold it for 50 cents on the dollar. Okay, so a million dollar property sold for $500,000. That one, unless it's on MLS and shakes up the entire kind of um, market, it won't show, so it won't really matter. It's just that one seller in that building of like four or 500 units took a big L, but it's not gonna affect all the buyers. Now, if this was on MLS, then obviously yes. And this is why you have the other nosy neighbors who are kind of like, oh man, that guy only sold for X. It brings the value in the entire street down. So there's the same thing in a building, right? It needs to be public record. And most of the time in assignments, it's off the record. Now the number of rising below values is not currently delaying projects. I agree with that. But in a worst case scenario, the lower prices could result in a significant delay for news coming to the market, which is exactly what I said, right? The fear of, um, Investor investing into pre-construction is ultimately how we create supply because end users don't buy condos that are five, six uh, years out unless you're kind of downsizing and you already have a place to live, right? First time home buyers generally buy resale most of the time unless they don't have a deposit, right? But that's a different topic for a different video. So it may delay it if we don't get kind of like a sentiment change for the pre-construction. And a lot of these assignments and these kind of stories of people being washed out and underwater is gonna scare some people off. But have I still heard some people wanting to buy pre-construction? Yes, I have. So, you know, we'll see, but I don't think it's that also big of a deal. My fear is that if this happens at scale, so hundreds and hundreds of units, the builder then has these units just sitting in inventory and that the builder doesn't have to sell the unit at a loss because it's not fair to the existing unit holders, but they could also need to close. So this really is a balance sheet question and it depends on the builder. If the big builder needs these units to close because they have to pay off some loans, then yeah, they're gonna probably sell it for a loss. I personally 
don't think a builder will care about what the value of the building is if they you know aren't a big time builder and their reputation isn't on the line right those big time builders probably have the financing to cover those or get an inventory loan and sell them at a higher price later and have holding power it's the builders who cannot have that holding power that they'll probably just fire sell it and it will affect those kind of buyers now what i have seen in a lot of these things are that the builders if they get the unit back you know they may have kept the 20 deposit and maybe they resell it but they have that 20 deposit to you know use as a quote-unquote down payment for the inventory loan or ultimately when they do sell it after the inventory loan they just keep the price high they increase the commission and try to offload it at that point right but again that's also in the video for a different day um, but they do have some inventory and most builders do keep uh, units left over to sell because that's how they get higher margins. They sell a bulk of them to get construction financing, right now 65, 75% of them. And then they keep like 10 to 15%, which is like the Brad Lamb model, where they sell at a higher price when the building's completed and that the values have gone up. So a lot of builders do that. And there is a lot of inventory that's at like a higher price anyways, but they probably can't hold on. So at the end of the day, can builders sell it or hold it? 100%. It really depends on their balance sheet and their motivation, right? As with most sellers. Now, buyers also don't have the incentive to close because if their shortfall is $200,000, they might as well walk away from the deposit, which is 100% true, right? I was talking about that and the builders will keep it, but they're always at the mercy of being sued, i.e. if the builder kind of sells it for less than what the original buyer bought it for, they could sue them for the damages, which is the delta, right? So that is always there, but for damages to be realized, not legal advice, okay, but just from seeing this enough, for damages to be realized, the deal has to have sold, right? Like the unit that the original buyer gave up has to have been sold so that there is a spread between them. Then you could sue for that, right? And this is why a lot of builders won't give you a mutual release if you choose not to close, right? So that you're still obligated to the contract you signed when you bought the pre-construction. Now, here's kind of the interesting thing I took from all of this article. Um, so someone on the mortgage side is saying that while some builders are allowing for assignments, uh, some don't and this is normal like if a builder has inventory that they're trying to sell they're not going to allow assignments so that they're not competing especially if that person who is assigning the unit is under stress and maybe they you know purchase for too high right but what they're saying is that the building is maintaining its value to prevent any liabilities if the builder doesn't allow for the assignment i think that's a bunch of baloney because i think most builders just want to get their money and get out because you know times are rough right now and this mortgage broker has seen up to 15 properties appraised at much lower than anticipated. So the keyword here I'm gonna highlight is anticipated. And the discrepancy meant that the clients have to make an extra large down payment to help them close on it. And I'll give you the math again. So if you bought a place for $500,000, say it's worth $400,000 now, the bank will only give you a mortgage on that $400,000, which is generally 80% of the 400. So you're getting a mortgage of 320 and you have to put down that $80,000 of the 400. But that difference between the 500 and the 400, $100,000, you have to come up in cash because the bank doesn't think it's worth that much. So therefore you have to put that $100,000 spread plus the $80,000 down payment for the $400,000, meaning it's $180,000 down on a $500,000 property, making it by my math, close to a 30 something percent uh, down payment, right? So that's kind of what a lot of these people are encountering. And all of this really depends on what you bought the unit at. And I've talked about this in the past before. There are a couple buildings I've been monitoring that have a very fast close and they were purchased for really high price. The irony in all of this is that all the units from what I can see have closed no problem with rumors of a blanket appraisal from a bank, right? So again, these are all rumors, but there were no issues with assignments or the closing of these properties that made it out there. So I'm gonna look into it a little bit more, but that was my biggest concern with where the assignment market is that a lot of these call it condos that were purchased at 20 30 percent above what the resale is aren't going to appraise properly but here we are almost an entire building or two has basically closed not a problem right so how this works again this is all like hearsay and allegedly is that if someone bought that same example i used five hundred thousand dollar condo and it's only worth four hundred thousand dollars the bank is saying hey you know what we'll just say that it is worth five hundred thousand dollars you only need to give us 20 percent down payment on that five hundred thousand dollars which is a hundred thousand dollars and we'll lend you the balance of that which is four hundred thousand dollars right but the value of that property is only worth four hundred thousand dollars meaning that the bank has lent them a hundred percent loan to value a little bit risky right because this is some of the stuff that we saw in you know the gfc but here we are here we are so i will look into that a little bit more but that's just some of the stuff that i've seen and 
To me, it kind of looks like the banks are backstopping the real estate market right now, if that is truly, truly what is happening. So with that kind of support, call it, in the equation, am I as concerned for some of these pre-constructions that are overvalued? Probably not, as long as the blanket appraisals exist, right? And we already had these blanket appraisals exist before with RBC. It's just now they may be happening after the fact, right? So again, I'll monitor this and keep you guys updated. But at the current moment right now, I think the assignment market is actually pretty safe. Um, not to like transact in, but like not as a huge massive pitfall. There's still gonna be like headwinds coming against it, but it's not as bad as what I originally thought based on what I just told you, right? So I'll leave it at that for now. And if you do have like a closing that's coming up that you're afraid it's gonna be say, you know, underwater, maybe you should look to the builder for some kind of blanket appraisal. Maybe that can help you, right? That's just my two cents. Anyways, if you are looking for some help on how to navigate this real estate market, now that we're kind of full swing spring market, you can book a call with me using the link that's on the screen right here. It's www.chatwithzen.com. Until next time, your move, your future. See ya. Now that you're done watching this one, how about this one or this one? You know what? Just watch them both. <laughs>